that fair? Sounds good. Okay, all right. How's everybody? It's great to be here. All power to the people. All power to the people. It's a new day in a revolution. Today, October, is National Black Panther Month. So it's a really an honor to be here. Thank you, Professor, for having us here. Sure, this is the chief right here, the man that makes it happen in the city of Chicago. He make it quick like clockwork. He was able to bring us in so we can share some light about what we're really about. How I came into the Royal Black Panther Party, I was a part of another organization. What happened was I decided to bring it home, back home to Chicago. So I wanted to leave that movement and start my own movement here in Chicago. And so what happened was a couple of years ago, I started an organization out here called, I had an idea. It takes a village to raise a child, at risk, at risk child. And what that meant was, any able-bodied man that's in a community would reach back and pull a youngster, younger generation up, and give them guidance. May it need chauffeur to go to do some, um, some studying or what have you. We were just trying to fill those gaps in, in the community. So with that idea, I reached out to Congressman Bobby Rush, a member of the original Black Panther Party, and I shot that idea to him, and he was like, wow, okay. What will we do? We'll have you come in. This was like in August last year. At the same time, I reached out to Congressman Danny Davis with the same plan. And when I reached out to Congressman Danny Davis, he was like, wow, okay. Well, what I want you to do is come to my office and have a meeting. So I met with Cong Congressman Danny Davis. We never looked back. I never had a chance to meet with Bobby Rush because we've been moving ever since. The strange thing about how it came about that many, many years ago, my mom worked with Angela Davis for prison reform. Now how my mom ended up working for, with Angela Davis on prison reform was through Congressman Danny Davis. Do the math on that. So, so many light years later, here I am working with the same person that put my mom and Angela Davis together. Now I'm working with Congressman Danny Davis. So everything coming back full a circle, mm -hmm. okay? So, and my mom also worked with Stokely Carmichael, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. If you go online, you'll see all the pictures. So I come from that. I wasn't fortunate to be born in a revolution, but the revolution was born inside me. Mm -hmm. And it's about us today, what we're about today is really getting out here and breathing life back into the community. People have been talking for 400 plus years with them marching with their singing, with their screaming. What it's about now is called unconditional love. We have to take this to the people and let the people know it's gonna take us to save us. Everybody play a role in this big puzzle. So we got much work to do. It's gonna take you, it's gonna take me, it's gonna take my kids. I was somewhere retired. My first big event was with the rapper MC Light, if you guys know her. And that was what for the Trayvon Martin rally here in Chicago. Once that took place, I went somewhere I was retired doing my thing. I'm old school with a new soul, so you probably can't tell. I'm almost 57. But I was really somewhere retired doing my thing. I'm an author of three books, played professional football for the Chiefs Triple A in 88. I done did so many things, this is what it's all about. But being retired when the George Floyd thing happened. It just woke something in me. It woke me up in the end. So once the Joy Floyd thing happened, I'm somewhere retired. And I'm just, you know, going through my mind with the ancestors. And the ancestors was more like, you know, when you're fighting for oppressed people, there is no retirement when you're revolutionary. Because people, any people oppressed everywhere needs help. And so that's what it's about. We're trying to bring agendas to our people. A new day. We're not trying to change anything that the original Black Panther Party did. Nothing at all. What we're trying to do is enhance it, elevate it, put it on steroids to get to the people. We're not in the 60s, but we still hold those etiquettes and those values that's passed down. If you know anything about the Black Panther Party, not only did they, they uh, 
started the sickle cell program. They also had ammo lamps. A lot of people don't even know they had ammo lamps. Yes, they had ammo lamps. The grocery bags also had their logo on it. So they did a lot of things in the community. A lot of things people are not even aware of to make a difference. And so that's what we're about. We're trying to take that torch and move it forward for a better tomorrow for each and everybody, right? And so here we are in Chicago with 27 chapters, working with the brother we're trying to do in 2023. We're trying to feed 100,000 people in one day, in one single day across the country. We got different organizations with us working. I'm working with two different round tables. One organization group, we with the Hope Organization with pastors over, I think we got like 30 black doctors. We got white uh, Americans too. We got a lot of people on the team. We got CEOs, we got congressmen. LaShawn Ford, we got um, all the women, uh, Kenya Brown, we got um, a whole lot of people working with us to make a difference. So what we're gonna do, we got a program called POW. Everybody know POW, Prison of War. Our POW in the community is protect our women by any means necessary. The most vulnerable amongst the people, the children and the women, right? So with our group, I'm based on integrity and revolutionary ethics. I recommend to all my comrades, we open doors for all women, that's what we do, because we're taking it to another level now, right? If it's gonna take us to save us, the church are not watching who? You're watching us. You're not gonna listen to what we're gonna say, you're gonna watch what we do. And if my handshake don't match my smile, you guys are gonna disassociate from it. So that's why it's important that we get out here and we do things like this, so you know what it's about. I'm 50 and I live my life, but I have children. So his children is my children, my children is his children. For example, your son is my son, my son is your son, and your daughter is my daughter, and my daughter is your daughter, and we are one people. One people. And it's gonna take us to be about the people's business. As I said before, people do a lot of talking. You see a lot of, um, Confusion. We're not one of those Black Panther groups, so that you know, that run around disrespecting the police, screaming, calling people out. We're not cutting that cloth. We're about once again breathing life back into the people and bridging gaps is going to make a difference. We're going to need the police on certain things. We need to make sure that our communities are safe. And it's going to take us. We must get out there and make sure that it's safe passage for you guys when you come to school. The senior citizens when they go to work. That's our responsibility. We sign on for that. We don't get no gold watches. There's no retirement for this. No retirement plan. We put it all on the line for you guys for a better tomorrow. So that's why it's an honor to really be here in October, National Black Panther Month, just to demonstrate what you guys and let you guys know. Everybody, if you're a recovering addict, if you're homeless, you're not alone anymore. You have people standing with you in the city of Chicago and around the country. If you've been watching uh, uh, national news, that was us um, back in April in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where an African-American guy got killed by the police. All those news on CNN, that was a Royal Black Panther Party. Like I said, we just came back from uh, last, this Saturday from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where Obama, President Obama, uh, Congressman Danny Davis and Mandela Byrne. This was just this week. So what we're doing now, because of the Royal Black Panther Party, if you guys haven't heard of Congressman Danny Davis, election is next Tuesday. We got him elected in June 28th because he had enough votes. He was short 5,000 votes thanks to the Royal Black Panther Party. We went out there and got the votes, and he's in office again. And so that's what it's about. It's about trying to have generational change. A profound effect. What that mean? You want to change the laws in this country, some of the laws. Hypothetically speaking, we're talking about the body cam. We want to make it where all police department is mandated to wear body cams. Have you ever seen a police when something happened, the gun fall off, the bag, you don't see that. Well, how the camera's not on. So we're trying to push that agenda to make sure all police departments throughout the country as mandated and sanctioned to wear body cam. And if you don't have it on when an incident happened, then you should be penalized for that. And that's what it's about. I have a problem with military vets, homeless military vets being homeless. I don't think no one who made the ultimate sacrifice for this country or any other country 
should be homeless, especially a military vet. So we are bridging uh, different agendas. With, um, we got a photographer from the New York Times that worked with us, and he worked with a program to try to help the veterans in the country. And so we do do that. We did Tent City a couple of weeks ago. Me and General uh, um, Bernard, we did a uh, theme for the veterans. We clothe, we feed, we shelter. We do all everything that's needed in the community. Like I said, we got so many different organizations, and we don't have the resources. We appoint you to those resources. Whatever it may be. For an example, if you're coming through drug recovery treatment, you call me, I'm going to come with you and go to whatever hospital it is that we go to to get you in treatment. To get you in the hospital, they're probably going to admit you. I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to sit through the whole process. Once they admit you in the hospital for the 90 days, once you come out, you got straight contact with me. You're not waiting on nobody else. I'm right there. Already got the connection with above and beyond, uh, uh, gateway, uh, several genetics, different recovery programs to help those who are suffering get straight into the program without having to worry about I'm in this by myself, right? And so that's how we're trying to plug those gaps in. So we have a graduation. I got a graduation Wednesday with Above and Beyond with uh, clients graduating from that treatment program. Then we have a big gala event, uh, a gap, a scavenging uh, event this Friday. Uh, with one of the CEOs been in business for 30 years, a recovery program, they got five halfway houses, and this is how we're trying to give back to the community. But these halfway houses, it's not the halfway houses when you're coming from prison, these are the halfway houses trying to get you, avoid you from going to prison. You understand what I'm saying? So when you're down on your luck, we don't look down on you, we're trying to breathe life back into you and pull you up, not push you in front of an 18 wheeler. We're trying to pull you up and give you a job, give you help, give you words of encouragement, and just breathe the life of God back into you. Because we all need somebody. It's gonna take all of us, right? And so this is what it's about. It's an honor that the brother had us here. The original Black Panther Party was actually designed to patrol the police. That's why it was created, to patrol the police, to watch the police, because the police was terrorizing the communities. So that's why it was created. It went from patrolling the police, watching the police to self-defense. Black Panther Party for self-defense. They went on and did so many different things. Me, I'm pushing the agenda. I came up with this like, matter of fact, we did an interview, the Royal Black Panther Party with a newspaper with seven chapters around the country has been interviewed. And one of the recommendations I made, so you guys will be the first outside the newspaper to heard this, I'm shooting to get the original Black Panther Party. We probably won't get the, um, the Nobel Peace Prize, but I think they should at least get some type of medal, the Freedom of, uh, 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 the, the Freedom uh, Medal, because of the uh, uh, sickle cell program, the different program that still exists to this day, to this day, and don't get any credit for it. So me, I'm pushing that agenda to try to get some type of medal for the original Black Panther Party. So we're involved in so many different things in, in the community. I can't even come from the top of my head because we're about the business. More work, less talk, that's our motto putting the work in. When we put the work in, everything else will take care of itself, right? If you look at anybody like MLK, Harriet Tubman, anybody who was really a revolutionary, Pancho Villa, Shea, if you look at any of these people, they actually start out by themselves. They sell a journey of a thousand miles, start with one tiny baby step. Harriet Tubman did what she did. And when she did what she did, other people came because they watched what she did. They seen she was sincere. She was authentic. Same thing with MLK. He started out and then the people came. That's why all of us can make a difference. You can make a difference. Everybody got a call and it's up to us to find out what that niche is. To better our community. To save one innocent life is like we have saved all of mankind. But to take one innocent life is like we have killed all of mankind. We have to stop with the shenanigans, the backbiting, the things we've been doing, the devices that divide mankind. I understand you got different religions, you got different issues, you got different this. That's fine. I respect all that. What I have a problem with how man put a twist on it and allow us to be divided. You got the red coats and the blue coats from the Civil War. You got the vice lords and this. Where did we get the training from? Where did we get this? We got it from the government. They taught us how to gang bang, right? But one thing about the government is, when it's time to come together and speak with one voice, 
They do it. The Republican Party, the Independent, and the Democrat, they come together to fight for the country. And that's what we have to do. The people have to come together and fight for our survival. We really do. We've been suffocated. We've been hoodwinked. We've been tricked. They got double standards, and that's why we're here to change things. I speak about organized pimping. Organized pimping is when the government is in a position to set up laws, policies that work for some people, but don't work for the other people. Give you an example of organized pimping. To me, organized pimping is when you tell a man or a woman you can't gamble in your house. If you gamble in your house, that's a crime. It's called gambling. But if you go to the casino, you lose your wife, the house, the kids, the dog, everything. It's cool. You know why? Because the government getting theirs off the top. Same thing about prostitution. If you sell your body, it's called pimping. Prostitution. But if you go to the bunny ranch in Las Vegas, you can get away with it. Why? Because the government get theirs off the top. This is the stuff that's creating sex trafficking and everything else. If we're going to have one thing for one people, we need to have it for everybody. Stand your ground. The same thing with staying your ground. Everybody know how that works. It should apply to everybody. My rights is no better than your rights. See, you have the constitutional rights, you have human rights, and the God-given rights. And your God-given rights trump all rights. There is no right other than the God-given right to exist, to live, right? And so it's going to take us to save us. It's been an honor to be here. I look forward to seeing you guys in the field doing some type of work in your communities. May you be a doctor, no matter what it is. It's going to take us. And we got to speak with one voice. A universal language is a language of love. God is love. Love is God. I'm not talking about all the other things that divide us, but those things that unite us. Thank you for your I'm time. Not, I'm this not going to talk to you again. I just want to say okay. that. So I, mean, so, so I have questions for you. I think some students may have a couple of questions as well. So do you see yourself basically the evolution of the Black Panther Party? What you all doing now? Because you keep keeping Absolutely. some of the legacy alive Absolutely. by the work that you're doing. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, didn't say you had 22 chapters? Yes, sir. So what, what do the chapters do? Where, where are they located? We got chapters in Oklahoma. We got one in Wilson, North Carolina. We got one in Wilson, uh, uh, Racine, Wisconsin. The one that you've seen on the news in April was Grand Rapids, Michigan. We have one Fort Wayne, Indiana, and we just expand around the country, mm -hmm. right? We're not really based on numbers. A lot of people want to know how many numbers you got. We don't worry about numbers. We're worried about working. We put the work in. That's what it's about. Like I said, we got to save people, and it's going to take us. When you do right, the people come. That's the numbers. Like I said, if I save one life, you know what that means to me? I save my own son. I save my own daughter. Right? And so that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And so the work, so the, the Black Panthers, which I'm well aware of that, they did a lot of work with civil cell. Can you break it down to us a little bit? What did they actually do when they came down to addressing that? And, uh, what, what, they what they did was with, with Black Panther Party, they bring things that was in the dark to the light. Okay. It wasn't known the way it is now, mm -hmm. right? And it's because of them. Same thing with different organizations. They start from the breakfast program. They put a light on it. Once they came and put a light on it, you see how it is today. They trying to find cures. They trying to elevate the things that was passed down. That's why I comment, we must reach back and get them credit for what they have done. Yes, Those was geniuses before their time. Yes, right. Now, I know the students know who the founders of the Black Panther, Black Panther Party, but before I ask you this question, which, uh, who are the founders of the Black Panther Party? We covered this. Any, any student want to answer that first before I ask them a question? Give me the names of one of the founders, one of them. We covered it in class. That's right. You got mm -hmm. Huey P. Newton. That's right. I want to make sure we're clear on that. I, I, I won't put it right on the spot. So give us your reflections on Huey P. Newton here and Bobby Seals. You. Oh, yeah. Why don't you give us your reflection on those two guys? Those are prophets. Those are revolutionary prophets mm -hmm. because they had a thought and put it in motion. Without them, the unification, the way it is, it wouldn't be because we have Marcus Garvey first, right? Mm -hmm. And at the time when they had the KKK, I think the KKK may have been like maybe 4,000. Marcus Garvey had maybe like 6,000. After all, that took place in the, uh, the Civil Rights uh, Movement. You had the Black Panther Party that came forth in 1966. And that brought more structure to the communities. It gave people pride. It gave people a, a, a way of being safe and belonging to the community. And it gave them a voice. And that's why we are what we are today because 
without them there is no other. A lot of times in society, the oppressors, the system, want to muzzle your voice and handcuff your pen. But that's why Chairman Fred Hampton said, you can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. If you guys know Pancho Villa, Shea, the revolution continues. It will be televised because that's what it's about. It's about us keeping it alive, right? And if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And it's going to take you. You're going to have a son. You're going to have a daughter. And you want tomorrow to be a better day for them. You want them to come outside and breathe fresh air. You don't want them to come outside and feel intimidated or feel threatened for them, especially kids and elders. So that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Any students have any uh, questions for uh, Commander there? Anybody? I guess like what were your thoughts about like, um, I guess like the self-defense uh, tactics? Self-defense, uh, we have self-defense training. They have maneuvers. They have um, events that they go on and they do everything from marsh, arts, karate, my secret, I better know when I pray to God, I never have to use it, to everything from gun training. But it's more for self-defense. We don't go out, you know, we're not doing anything if anybody that's against this country, we stand against that. We are for this country. This is our country, right? And we're going to make it a better place to live for everybody. So we're against anything, got anything to do with going against the government, only for fighting for the people right. And so self-defense means exactly that, to defend yourself and your community and your property. Whatever the Constitution said, that's what we're talking about. We just hope that everybody apply it to everybody equally. That's important because, you know, like I performed the class, the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense was never about coming up against the entire system of the United States government. It was all about dealing with, like say, police brutality, excessive force, period, even though they began to work on higher levels because they changed the gun laws in the state of California because the Black Panther Party would, you know, carry the guns with them in public. Absolutely. You know, they changed that law because the Black Panther members with Huey P. Newton leading the charge began to confront what was wrong with the police. Right. So right. that's why they ended up changing those particular laws in California. And if you look back in history, what we've covered, you'll see the Black Panther Party members did not really hurt anybody. They really didn't hurt anybody with the Quantel Pro that was pretty much set up by J. Edward Hoover and the FBI. Right. So let me ask you this here then. So when you talk about the civil rights movement, and then black power comes right in with the civil during that era. So what do you think are the main differences to you and your from your perception? with the civil rights leaders and the black power of Black Panther leaders. What do you think would be the uh, difference for you? The difference for me is we all play a role and everybody brings something different to the table. Mm -hmm. What it is, sometimes we get sidetracked by different, uh, 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 different uh, ideologies, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the day, we have the same means to an end. Right. It's about just making the world a better place. Yeah. And so today, we're trying to get rid of some of those kinks and focus more on the things that unite us than those things that divide us. Because we can find a lot of things that may divide us, but those things that unite us is the things that make us powerful. I mean, really, really powerful, right? How they say it's power in prayer, it's power in unity. And that's why the real, the original Black Panther Party, if you know, if you guys know anything about the Black Panther Party here in Chicago, mm -hmm. they, in 19, April 4th, 1969, that's when, uh, if you ever heard of Operation Push from Jesse Jackson, or I think it's the, the I don't wanna misspeak, the, lesbian, the LG, whatever that is, the real Rainbow Coalition was the one that was started on the north side of Chicago, right here, April 4th, 1969. It was Cha-Cha, for the young lords. It was Stein Harmon for the young patriots. You know, High Thurman, everybody know who he is. He's around right now. Uh, High Thurman, Chairman Fred Hampton, Bob Orr, who went to college here in Chicago and got together and created the Rainbow Coalition. And the strange thing about that, last year, August, we was doing a rally on the north side on Chase Street in Rogers Park where they have the children, we call it in cages from ice, or separated from their parents, if you guys are familiar with that. So we went and did a protest with the Brown Berets, Brown Berets, White Panther Party, uh, Black Panther Party. We unite our coalitions and our alliances nationwide and speak with one voice. So now they have a Panther movement with all the different Panther fractions sitting at the table together, 
so we have more teeth when we speak. So we just did a thing with uh, uh, the chief. I think it was uh, about a month and a half ago with all the gangs in Chicago to try to stop the violence. And I think that's the difference now with us trying to take it to the youth because this is where it's going to start. We got to hit the colleges, we got to hit the jails, we got to hit everywhere where youth are at to try to reach them and let them know it's okay. Everybody needs somebody. You're not alone anymore. Because if you feel pressure, if you feel that you, your parents, because I know a lot of people that got money, but they don't know how to show the kids love. I know parents have never told their daughters they love them. And it makes a difference later on in life. That's why you have a lot of serial killers, a lot of uh, these random acts in the community, because kids don't know how to cope. So they need mentorship. They need examples. And that's what we're trying to do, plug those gaps in. Okay. Uh, any questions from the students, uh, uh, Commander? Chief. I don't Anybody? All questions are good questions, anything you might want to know. Or maybe, if you don't mind, Professor, you got, you got, you got any questions for them? Yeah, I'm just listening, man. I just wanted to just take the information. Man. Yes, indeed. Understood. So, my our students sometimes um, look for activities to be involved in as good citizens. What practical programs do you have going on a daily basis? Right now, we work with the congressman doing a lot of different things. We're not doing anything specific because we got so many activities going on right now. But one of the things that we are doing, we're getting out, I think they have a, a job fair thing that they recruit for construction. We have, um, like I say, the POW thing. If you've seen the final call, you guys may not read the final call. That's been us that been in the final call for the last six months. If you remember the woman that was walking the dog on North Avenue Beach that got abused by the police officer, that was us doing that as well. And so we're really- What was you doing what? Pardon me? That was you doing what? That was us that was in the final call newspaper that was asking that that, law, that uh, officer be fired that assaulted the sister walking the dog. Do you have her, um, do you have an office somewhere? We, my office is on the north side of Chicago. I gave you a car right there. Okay. Yes, indeed. And so that's what it's about. We did that for her. What we do? Um, and all the women issues, I mean, everything got something to do with women. We, we are involved. Matter of fact, now I remember August last year, we were with Chairman Fred Hampton at Logan's Prison. So that's another thing we did last year. And what we went down there for, we fighting against inhumane prison conditions for inmates are locked up. So we went to Logan Prison, make sure that women had the sanitation and everything that they need to keep them hygiene. So we did that, we chartered the bus, and we went there. We also, with Congressman Danny Davis, not this November to this past and one before, we went to the prison system, Danville Prison, Sheridan Prison, and for Father's Day, we had contact business with the inmates and the fathers. And we wore the fathers and the children just have contact visits. For Christmas, they set up to take the parents, I think they chartered like four buses, to take the parents to the prison and do Christmas. So the kids, the, the inmates was able to wrap presents for the parents and the, pres the parents that we brought present for the inmates and take it to the prison. So that's another thing we deep in the prison reform. As I said before, that's how my mom came into it, working with Angela Davis in prison reform. So that's just trickling on down. It's a must that we do that, especially the stuff that's going on inside of prison. So I would assume to say that, so the evolution of the Black Panther Party with your, uh, the Royal Black Panther Party is working with women's rights, make sure the women are being taken care of, and along with some prison reform. Prison reform, recovering addicts, uh, justice, that was us. Uh, <laughs> here goes some history. If you guys remember the incident that happened in Kenosha, Wisconsin, with Carl Richenberg, I can't pronounce his last name, uh, when he went to trial. So Cal. Cal yeah, when he went Cal to trial, yeah. the Royal Black Panther Party was the only Black Panther Party in America that would stand out there. If you guys seen the video, seen, we was reviewed by a lot of, interviewed by a lot of different people. But it was a lot of Proud Boys. If you watch the video, the Proud Boy had guns, not, and we was at the court. You don't supposed to have guns, but you would see a guy walking around with a shotgun, a case with a shotgun, and you know. But we was there, and that's what it's about. Nobody black got murdered, right? But your son is my son, and we're gonna fight for justice. It doesn't matter, right? Oppressed people is oppressed people. So that's why we went there, just to make sure, to try to make sure that he was served the justice that he deserved. But it didn't happen our way, but we went out there. So that's some of the things we do. We fight for justice all over the country. 
That's another thing we do. So we was the only Black Panther Party out there standing boots on the ground, making it happen. So you all do a lot of work just like uplifting the community on all, all those different levels. We're doing, we doing it all. What was yeah. the young guy that was shot by the police that Jason, what was his name? The young guy that was shot by the police as he was walking to his car in, in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Oh, uh, 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 um. What was his name it slips me right now, the young guy. I can't think of that. I know another guy. That's it, you got it, you got it. I know his family a little bit. The reason I'm bringing his name up because if you notice, during his uh, CBS News interview, he stated that he wasn't thinking properly when he got shot, because he was going to his car to really grab a, a knife. Right, right. He was going to his car to grab a knife, the knife was on the ground, on the floor of the car. He's going to grab, that's why the officer shot him. Right. That's why the officer's beating that case. But you know, it was that's another, it was another him. guy got shot too at one of the posters down there as well. Mm -hmm. After that, matter of fact, with Karen and Wright, they was walking to Washington, D.C., right. and the guy got shot, you know, a protester. Yeah. So, you know, it's a dangerous, like I said, we don't get paid, and I honor you, brother, and I thank you for everything you do. You really been out here setting the pace for us, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, we just trying to make a difference, you know? Yeah. It, we don't get nothing for this, but you right. put your life on the line, a lot of people, you know how it goes. It's not a lot of success stories in this right here, you know? But this is what we signed up for, to make a better tomorrow. And so we ended up doing it. So maybe when you, you go to the prison, you know, like the professor saying, sometimes we look for activities for the students. So if you all have a trip coming up to the prison, you can let me know. Absolutely. We some, so and we finna do a lot of things. We got, matter of fact, sorry, we, uh, Juneteenth, what we did, we just gave away $1.3 million. We the only black pastor party. Everybody else you'll see walking around talking about giving me a donation. You're not gonna see that. What you will see, Juneteenth, Monday the 20th, we gave away $1.3 million back to Chicago. We pulled up four 18 wheelers, each 18 wheeler had $400,000 worth of merchandise from brand new furniture, stove, bicycles, We Matter of fact, it's a commercial out with us and Danny Davis with City Serve. That's the organization that we're with that we've done that. So if you guys trying to be active, it would be an honor to work with you guys. We're trying to do mentorship. We're trying to feed the people. We're finna do CPR class and get the thing. I don't know what you call it when the people having an overdose and you, sh you know, the little thing. So we're trying to get those yeah. training because when we out here and we've been doing that with the chief, we the one that's been doing a community patrol on the CTA train. We've been doing it for two years, right? Before anybody started doing, he was doing it before then. Right. And so, but when we out here, yeah. it's only right to be prepared for anything that's out there and dealing with people in the public. So we need to know how to do CPR. We need to know how to help the people that's having a, a, a having an overdose. We need to have the instruments with us. So we're trying to get that trained so we be more efficient when we out in the, in the public. Yes, yes, go ahead, please. Uh, with that, do you guys do any like um, mental health training as well? Yes, dealing with we like have a team, we have a Minister of Health that handles all that. So we have Minister of Health, Minister of Defense, different uh, uh, ministers, and we work with everything. That, I mean, when I say everything, we work with it all, and that's very important. That's the most important right there. Healthy eating, we're trying to do a thing now. Uh, feed the people, free feed the people program, where we're trying to uh, get organizations that fill those gaps in the, in the food deserts here in Chicago. So we just started a thing with that. We're trying to get in the communities and do that. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then how many students might be interested in going to a prison one day? Possible as an activity, I mean, if you're interested, you're interested? Okay, everybody, okay. That's good to know, because I've visited a whole lot of prisons during my career. Got a chance to talk to inmates all over the state of Illinois, down in uh, maximum state prison, minimum security, medium security. So I think it'd be a good, a worthwhile trip to just listen, hear some of their stories, okay? And then talk about, okay, Chris, so this is what you call seriously the evolution of the Black Panther. I think Huey P. Newton, Fred Hampton, and Bobby Seals, Anthony Davis, they would be proud of what you all are doing, because you're taking it to the next level. Everything was in their 10 point plan even back in the 60s. Everything you're talking about, so you, you're keeping the work, you're keeping it going. Absolutely. Okay, all right, good enough, so appreciate that. So, and, and, and you know, we doing food, so if you guys are interested, like I said, we hooked yeah. up with a couple different shelters, right? Uh, food pantry. If you guys want to work at the food pantry, get in contact with the chief. Let me know. We can put you at a food pantry, and you guys can do internship, externship. We'll work with you. Even Congressman Danny Davis, if you guys want to do some internship, he loves the children. We can get you in and work with the congressman. Okay. So this one is about people helping people make the world a better place. Cool. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks for sitting in, Professor. Thank you, Thank you Professor. All right. So I thought that was pretty, a pretty thorough, thorough presentation, probably what they're doing now. We have Fred Hampton, John Hampton Jr. We work with him all the time. Anyway, I like some of the students, he's just so busy. Yeah. Traveling yeah. Did anybody watch that movie by the, any chance, uh, The Messiah? Mm -hmm. you, you check it out. What are your thoughts about that movie? 
Well, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I enjoyed how in depth they went in it. Yeah. Um, and they portrayed a lot of stuff that like you wouldn't mm-hmm. you aren't able to read about now. Yes. Um, but also I felt like it was more in tune with like the flash have like the factual facts mm-hmm. of it. Like that's coming out now with Cornell Pro. That's right. Um, stuff getting leaked and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoyed it and I cool. think it's tough on both ends of that mm-hmm. as well. If you guys really want a movie that can fill you in, matter of fact, it's a documentary, Vanguards of the Revolution. So everything Chief just talked about, from the sickle cell, to the amalam, to the food, anything, all of that's in there. It's called Vanguards of the Revolution. Yeah, I and it, ta- I mean, it takes it all the way back and updates you to the day. So you can get a lot of information out of that. For sure. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Any other questions, anybody? Closing thoughts for the young man before we uh, watch the video. Okay, I thought you looked really good. Um, good. Could somebody take a picture of me and him real quick and then you can just text it to my phone with your phone if you don't mind? Anybody? Okay, take a picture with you. Yeah, where do your comrade go? He sat down. Uh, yeah, yeah, take a quick picture and then we'll get started. Okay. We live in the picture world nowadays, you know how it sure. goes. But I appreciate them coming to the class. It's okay. Kind of informative there. What's going on? So that's what they're doing a whole lot of work. He has 22 chapters. That, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. Maybe he, uh, where, where did he go? He's coming. He right. Okay. All right. All right. Commander. And then plus, they, uh, they can't talk about it.